matter around us. This is a lesson of standard 8. What is matter? Matter is nothing but which can be defined as anything which has a definite mass and occupies space. All the objects in this universe is made up of matter. I am made up of matter. In this world, all the objects are perceived by our five sense organs like sense, touch, smell, taste and hearing. When we say matter, as I already told you, it is defined as which has a definite mass and which occupies space. This matter can be divided into three different types. That is, it is it may be a solid or it may be a liquid or it may be a gas. For solid, we can take the example as wood, stone. For liquid, water, juice. For gas, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, anything. So, this matter is made up of atom, molecule or ions. So, first we should know what is an atom. To know what is an atom, we should know what is an element. Because the atom is the smallest particle of the element. So, what is an element? Element is nothing but it is the building block of everything. For example, when we are breathing air, the oxygen has elements in it. That is, air we breathe in has elements like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, etc. When gold is broken down into very small pieces, even each tiny piece of the gold has gold elements in it. So, when we say matter, matter is made up of atom, molecule and ions. So, we know an element is nothing but the building block of everything. So, when we say atom, atom is nothing but the very smallest particle of an element. And molecule is nothing but when two or more atoms combine together, you form a molecule. And ions, as I told you, the third one is ion here. Ion is nothing but the atoms or group of atoms which is having a positive or negative charge is called as ions. So, we say matter is made up of atom molecule or ion. This atom is nothing but the smallest particle of the element and two or more atoms when they combine together it forms a molecule and the atoms or group of atoms which has a positive or negative charge is called as the ion. Now we are going to see how are the symbols of elements being represented. There are there were four different types. The first type was Greek symbol. Greek symbol means in earlier days they used geometric shapes. For example, they represented air, water, fire etc. using some kind of geometric shape. It is given in your book. We can just refer it. Next when we say alchemist symbol. This alchemist symbol is different people used different symbols. So it is called as alchemist symbol. The third one is Dalton symbol. Dalton symbol is nothing but a pictorial representation of the elements. Hydrogen is represented by a symbol. Oxygen is represented by a symbol. Nitrogen is represented by a symbol. But all in the form of pictures. Now we use Bersilius. The last type of symbol is Bersilius symbol. John Jacob Bersilius formed a different type of symbol for elements in which he instead of using all these he said let the uh, alphabets be used as symbols. So use of alphabets is called as Bersilius system of symbol. This is a system for determining the symbol of elements. For example, there are different forms. In the first form, usually the symbols of elements are represented by their first letter in, cap in the uppercase. For example, boron, capital B, carbon, capital C, fluorine, F, hydrogen, H, iodine, I, nitrogen, N, Oxygen O, Sulfur S. It is used in the upper case. Next, when we are coming, there are few elements in which the elements uh, will have the same alphabet. For example, Boron, Beryllium or Boron, Barium. Both are starting with the letter B. Hence, we cannot use the same symbol for both the elements. In that case, we use the first and the second alphabet as the 
symbol. For example, the first alphabet is represented in the uppercase and the second alphabet is represented in the smaller case. For example, aluminium, capital A, small L. Barium, capital B, small A. Beryllium, capital B, small E. Bismuth, capital B, small I. Bromine, capital B, small R. Cobalt, capital C, small O. Next, the third is, there are few elements in which the first two letters of the element are similar. In that case, we represent the element by using the first letter and the second or third letter. For example, in this argon, we use argon, AR. Arsenic, we use A, S. Because in both these, the first two letters are similar. So, we use, here we use first and second letter. But in the second one, you use the first and the third letter. So, this is a system of naming the elements. Argon, arsenic, chlorine, calcium, manganese and magnesium. See here, similarly here you can see, ma magnesium we use capital M and the third letter G. Whereas in manganese we use M and the third letter N. So, this is a system. Next, in few elements, it was named using the Greek letters. Their yeah, Greek names or Latin names were used as it. For example, sodium, we say in Latin, we say it as natarium. So, its symbol is capital N, small a. And for iron, it is used as ferrum. The Latin name is ferrum and hence we use Fe. There are certain elements in which we use its color or the place where it was formed or some other symbol of that place. For example, iodine, since it's violet in color, we use I. And mercury, it is represented by God Mercury and the symbol is HE. There are many more examples. When we go into our book, we can see each and every example. Next, uh, element is further classified into three different types. They are metals, non-metals and metalloids. Metal, we know that we use in our daily life iron, gold, copper, etc. Non-metal, sulfur, carbon, metalloid, boron, silicon, etc. Now we are going to see what are the properties of this metal and non-metal. Metal, as I already told you, metals, the physical state of metal is, it is usually solid, very rarely it is liquid. Whereas this um, um, non-metal, it may be in the solid state, liquid state or gaseous state. Next, when we say malleability, malleability is nothing but when you hammer it, it can be formed into a thin sheet. So, this ability for metal is very good, whereas for non-metal, it is very poor, the sheet may be very soft or brittle, it may break. Next, when you say ductility, ductility is nothing but it can be changed into thin wire form, that is the ductility. And here, in the case of metal, it is good. But in the case of non-metal, it is very poor or softer brittle. Next, melting point for metal is very high. For non-metal, it is low. Boiling point, it is very high. It is very low. Density, for metal, it is very high. For non-metal, it is very low. When you come to thermal and electrical conductivity, metals conduct good therm heat and electricity whereas non-metals are very poor conductors of heat and electricity. When you pass the current through a metal it easily passes whereas it does not pass through a non-metal. What does metalloid then? Metalloid has the property both of a metal and a non-metal. When you come, when you say the uses of metals, what are the uses of metals if you say metals can be used in the making bridges, engine, iron parts because here and all iron is used and silver and gold are used for making jewels as we already knew and mercury is used in thermometers and aluminium is used in electrical wires whereas when you say the uses of non-metals, non-metals diamond is used for making jewels, cutting and grinding equipments, sulfur is used for ma manufacturing gunpowder and vulcanization of rubber. Phosphorus is used for matchbox. The red side of the matchbox is made up of phosphorus. Nitrogen is used for manufacturing ammonia. We can go on. And when you come to non-metals, uh, silicon is used as an electronic device, is used in electronic devices. And boron is used in fireworks. 
and for um, uh, fuel for ignition in the rocket. Next, we will see what is a compound. Compound is nothing but it is a pure substance which is formed due to the chemical combination of two or more elements in a fixed ratio. For example, we can say water is a compound. This compound is of two different types. Organic compound, inorganic compound. This organic compound is obtained from non-living sources. Example, chalk, baking powder. Whereas, inorganic compound is obtained from living sources like um, living sources like plants, animals. An example of it is protein, carbohydrates, etc. When you come to compounds, the compounds are in the solid state, liquid state or gaseous state. I will give you a few examples for compounds which are in the solid state. For example, sand, silica, it is in the solid state. It has silicon and oxygen. Next, when you come to liquid state, we can say water is in the liquid state and water has both hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, next, acetic acid. I think you all know what vinegar is. Vinegar has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. When I say this compounds, is it also in the gaseous form? We can say carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, which is a pollutant in the gas. So, carbon dioxide, it has carbon and oxygen. So, what are the uses of these compounds when we take? Water, we all know water. Water is very essential for drinking which has hydrogen and oxygen. Its uh, chemical name is dihydrogen monoxide. When you come to table salt which we use in our day to day life. Sodium chloride, it has sodium and chlorine. It is used as a preservative, it is used as a taste enhancer. When we take sugar, it is sucrose which has carbon, mm. hydrogen, oxygen. Okay children, I think now you are very clear about what is matter, what is matter made up of element, atom, molecule, ion, what are the symbols of elements and how the element is divided into metal, non-metal, metalloid, their properties, their uses and compound and their uses. We will see in the next class. Thank you.